if you're looking for a way to enjoy butterscotch cookies and still save on bites, points, and calories, I have the perfect solution for you here. These are my butterscotch crunch cookies with a surprise ingredient inside. These are delicious and have a nice butterscotch flavor. So if you're interested in seeing how these are done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine, but it's one that I adapted from someone else. I found this interesting sounding recipe from Skinny Kitchen called Butterscotch Pillows. And I thought that's an interesting name. Let me give those a try. And I did, but there were a few things I wanted to change. So I adapted it to my own recipe and I am calling them Butterscotch Crunch Cookies. I don't know where pillows came from, but it was a tasty cookie. But you could have one cookie for one point or one bite. I'm on the Better Balance plan of healthy which is equivalent to the old WW Blue Plan, which I guess is now equivalent to the WW Point system. But while one bite or point is great for a cookie, there were 64 of them and they were very small. I wanted something a little more substantial, a little more satisfying, and hopefully keep it within that low range for bites and points. And I succeeded. But I did make a few changes. So let's go over the ingredients real quick. I have here one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I have here one cup of brown sugar replacement. I'm using the Bestie brown sugar, um, which for Paul, my partner Paul, gives him the least amount of um, the aftertaste, that cooling aftertaste. And it's really a very good sweetener. I personally preferred the So Nourished because it made the cookies a little firmer, which is what I had wanted. The Bestie tends to make them a little softer, but either way, they're still delicious. Now I have here one half cup of light butter, and you know I normally try to swap out butter for pumpkin or banana or what have you, but this is butterscotch cookies. So I figured I needed to have the butter in there. Although they're also called butterscotch cookies and there's no scotch. But anyway, I did want to use the light butter and still keep the points and bites down. And I did manage to do that. I have here in this baggie one cup of Fiber One cereal. And this is the one that I'm using. There's also All Bran, which is similar. But all brand, the bites and points are a little higher. This fiber one is much lower than the all brand. So that's why I prefer using this. Plus I like it has a faint sweetness to it. So I really do enjoy the fiber one. This is not sponsored, I'm just saying. In the original recipe, Skinny Kitchen used Rice Krispies. So you could use that if you want. I just wanted a little more crunch to my cookies. Or you could even like break up some Cheerios. You could do whatever you want. You can swap it out if you don't want to use this or can't find it, just change it up. But I have them in a baggie because I am going to break them up a little bit. I don't want them in too big of a segment, so I am going to crush them up a little bit. I have here one quarter cup of Bestie powdered sugar. And this is the one, I don't have the package for the Bestie brown sugar. I would have shown you that too. And this is another one does not have any erythritol, which I think is the problem for that cooling effect. So it's really great if you have that cooling effect aftertaste that you want to get rid of. That's a good option. I'm using a quarter cup in the original recipe. They actually used a half a cup of regular powdered sugar. And you could swap this out for regular powdered sugar and just, just for the bites and points. I don't honestly think it will affect them too badly. But when I made them, I thought I really only needed a quarter cup. I didn't need the whole half a cup. Maybe it's because they made more cookies with theirs that they needed more sugar. 
but I've got away with a quarter cup and it's also sugar-free so if I need a little extra I don't mind putting it in there and trying to calculate for bites and points. I have here one egg and that is of course at room temperature you always want any ingredients especially in baking to be at room temperature so they will combine more easily. I have here one half teaspoon of nutmeg. Now that was not in the original recipe so that's part of my adaptation but I think that the nutmeg really enhances that butterscotch flavor so you can leave it out, but it will boost the butterscotch flavor a little bit, so I do recommend using it. I have here one quarter teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of table salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So those are all of the ingredients that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna crush up my fiber one, bring in my bowl, shuffle a few things around, and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in the salt, baking soda, baking powder, and nutmeg to the flour. And I'm just going to use one of the beaters from here and just whisk it lightly. If I thought about it ahead, I would have probably put the flour in a slightly larger bowl, but just whisk that through to incorporate everything so you don't have pockets of salt or baking powder or nutmeg. All right, so I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to put this back in my mixer there, bring in my big bowl and my light butter, add that to the bowl, as well as the brown sugar replacement. And now I'm just going to cream the two of these together until it's light and fluffy and the sugar is fully incorporated into the butter. It'll probably take about a minute or so. Okay, now what I'm going to do is add in my egg and my vanilla and we're just going to mix that to incorporate. Okay, now we're going to add in the flour. I'm just gonna use the mixer and it's just to bring it together. If it starts getting a little too firm and the mixer starts having trouble, I will switch over to my spatula, but you just wanna start this off on low. And usually whenever I add flour to wet, I usually mix it together a little bit first so that when I do turn on the mixer, it's not gonna create a big flour shower all over the place. And then I'm going to start mixing. And you do want to scrape down the sides just to get all of that flour incorporated here. And then another quick mix. And whenever I'm mixing something like this and a lot of the batter gets stuck to the beaters, as I finish I start to pull it up and let anything on the beater splatter off to the sides and then turn it off so that way it comes out as clean as possible. So now I'm going to add in the Fiber One cereal that I crushed up. All I did was just beat it a little bit and roll over it with a rolling pin. But you don't have to worry about getting too crazy, too fine of a piece. You just want to break up some of the bigger pieces. Just going to stir this through and get those cereal bits all incorporated. Now, as you can see, this dough is a little more like a batter falling off of the spoon, but that's fine because what we're going to do now is put this in the refrigerator for at least half an hour and let that set up. In the Skinny Kitchen recipe, they had you put it into the freezer for half an hour and you had to make sure you remembered it, but I don't trust my memory and I found that half an hour in the fridge was enough to firm this up. So, half hour in the fridge and I'll be back. All right, so it's been about a half an hour taking this out of the fridge and I have a cookie scoop, number 50 cookie scoop, which is about a tablespoon. So if you don't have a scoop, you're not gonna get a scoop. Roughly about a tablespoon of dough for each cookie. Now I got 28 cookies out of this as opposed to the 64 that Skinny Kitchen got. I wanted something, as I said, a little bit heartier. So I'm going to just scoop it out Put it in my hand, roll it a little bit, put it in the sugar or a powdered sugar replacement and roll it around a little bit there. Shake off any excess and then put it on the cookie sheet. Now I have two cookie sheets. I'm going to put 14 on each and once I get them all laid out, I'm going to flatten them slightly, but I'll show you that. Let me finish scooping these up and getting them dusted and I'll be back. 
Okay, so I'm finishing up and I changed my tactic a little bit. They were getting a little too soft and I could have put them back in the fridge. But instead, since I'm using a scoop, I decided to just scoop them directly into the powdered sugar and just shake that up a little bit first. Then I can take them in my hand and shake them a little bit better. And you don't have to worry about them looking too wonky at this stage because we are going to flatten them, as I said. So let me straighten a few things up and we will flatten these and get them in the oven. All right, so now to flatten them, I'm just going to use the bottom of a glass. I'm going to spray it with some cooking spray because this dough will be a little sticky. You could use a fork as Skinny Kitchen suggested, but I think that's a lot more work because you get stuck in the tines and you have to get it out. So I'm just going the easy route, spraying my glass bottom. And you, you just want to slightly press it just to flatten it out a little bit. And as you probably saw, I did not even use all of the powdered sugar replacement and I only used a quarter cup. So you could probably get away with two tablespoons. I just made sure I had a little extra in there. And you could, as I said, use regular confectioner sugar if that's all you had. All right, so these are slightly flattened. They're probably about a quarter inch thick. So we're gonna put these in the oven for about 12 to 16 minutes. You want them to get a little brown around the edges and you want the center to be somewhat firm. You don't want it to be like still doughy. So I usually tap it just to make sure that it is set. So I'm going to put these in the oven. I'm going to put each one on its own rack and halfway through, I'm going to swap them and then spin them also just to get them evenly heated through. But 12 to 16 minutes and I will be back. Okay, so there we have them. My butterscotch crunch cookies looking delicious. See if they've gotten a little brown on the edges here and they are firm to the touch when you press there's no dampness that is what you're looking for now mine took the full 16 minutes if your oven runs a little hotter jennifer lynn um, then it might be closer to 12 but i start checking them at 12 and then see how much longer i have to go but mine usually runs the full 16. And I'm going to let these cool for about five minutes on the pan just to help them set up a little bit and then I'm going to transfer them onto the cooling racks which are underneath the pans right now and I'm just going to slide the parchment over I'm not going to remove them from the parchment just yet I will do that once they're fully cooled now as I said I adapted this from a recipe from skinny kitchen for butterscotch pillows and I will link to that recipe down below if you want to see the original. That one gave you 64 cookies at one point or bite each. I'm giving you 28 cookies still at one better balance bite or old blue point or new WW point. Now these are a true one bite cookie until you get up to I believe it's five and then it jumps to six points or bites you know with that healthy WW math. But a great cookie to have when you're needing a little snack. Now you can store them in an airtight container, a baggie or what have you on the counter for, I usually store them for up to five days without any problems. Or you can put them in the fridge or even the freezer and just bring them to room temperature before you eat them. But if you need any cookies for a party, you want to make sure that you have something that you can have. These would be great. And they'd also be great for Santa. Just saying. Now, if you are following calories, the calories for each one of these is 43. And if you're following macros, the fat would be 1.4 grams. The carbs would be 15.2 grams. The fiber would be 1.2 grams. And the protein would be 1.1 grams per cookie. Not bad at all. A delicious treat you can have during the holidays. Definitely getting a butterscotch aroma from these. They smell delicious. And trust me, they are. So there you have it, my butterscotch crunch cookies. I hope that you will give these a try. I will link to my version of the recipe on my blog directly down below in the description box. Also down there, you'll find links to the blog itself, my Amazon storefront, my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, Skinny Syrups Code, 
and my social media. If you want to follow me over there, there's both Instagram and two Facebook groups that I am part of. So check out the description box for all sorts of information. And if you wouldn't mind doing the usual, like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video, such as tomorrow. Tomorrow is my big dessert timber cookie swap. I'm doing a collab with about 15, 16 other channels. So you're gonna have cookies galore for the holidays. Now, not all of those will be Weight Watchers friendly, but it's the holidays and this is the time to let yourself indulge a little bit. So hit that notification bell and you will be alerted when that D September cookie swap pops up tomorrow, Saturday the 17th at 9 a.m. So get ready for a lot of cookies. But I'm going to swap these over to the cooling racks, get these all cooled down and get ready to indulge just slightly. So until next time, bye.